Okay, let's discuss the various forms of wireless interference and what we can do about them. A typical wireless router with an external omnidirectional antenna, with its antenna pointing straight up and down, will emit radio waves in a large donut shaped pattern. In a perfect world, without walls, without windows, without metal doors, and other forms of interference, that signal will eventually reach about twice the maximum indoor range printed on the side of the box. Now, unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world, and very few people are setting up access points in their backyard. So it's important for us to understand what is going on in our home in terms of material and other types of interference that can cause problems with our wireless signal. So before we get into the actual physical types of interference, let's talk about an invisible form of interference. That form of interference is known as attenuation. And what attenuation is, is basically the further a wireless signal or any kind of a signal gets from its source, the longer the distance it has to travel back and forth between where it is and where it came from and it begins to degenerate or slow down. So in layman's terms, if you're sitting there with a laptop right next to a wireless G router, you should be receiving a 54 megabits per second signal. You should be receiving all four bars, so to speak. But if you pick that laptop up and start walking away, once you start getting around 100 to 125 feet, you're not going to have four bars anymore. You're going to have two to three bars, and you're going to have a lot less bandwidth than what you originally started with. There are several things you can do to remedy this. One would be to purchase a high gain antenna to increase your signal strength. Another would be to set up either an expander or additional access points in order to spread out your signal. Or simply purchase a wireless router with a greater range. So on to the actual physical causes of interference. We're all sitting around using radios and TVs and all these wonderful devices and not having a problem. So why is it that our wireless networks have all this difficulty? Well, the reason is, basically, government regulations don't allow private networks to expand beyond a certain distance or to have a signal that's strong enough to interfere with other forms of important communication. So what we have is we have some pretty weak devices that get interfered with pretty easily. Now luckily, wireless can pass easily through things such as cinder block walls, drywall, plaster, wood. Wireless has no problem passing through those. However, where wireless runs into difficulty is more dense objects such as metal, concrete walls, water-filled fish tanks, glass, mirrors, insulated walls, etc., etc. Obviously, you're not going to go around knocking your walls down to reduce wireless interference, but you need to find somewhere to put your wireless router. Typically, you want to place your wireless router as close to the center of your home as possible, or position it so there are as few walls as possible between it and your wireless clients. Another thing you want to take into account is the angle of the wall between your access point and your wireless client. So what does that mean? What that means is if you have a six inch thick wall between your access point and your wireless client at a 90 degree angle, that wall will appear to be six inches thick. However, if you change that angle to 45 degrees, that wall will now seem a foot thick. If you change that angle to two degrees, that six inch wall will appear to your wireless router and your wireless client to be 12 feet thick. That's why sometimes just simply picking up and moving your access point a few feet in one direction or the other or picking up and moving your wireless client or laptop a few feet in one direction or the other will make a world of difference.